Good evening. Welcome to the arena. I'm John Robson in for Michael Corrin. So uh, how's that hopey, changey stuff working out for you now? Barack Obama seems to be on the ropes as three separate but ominously similar scandals erupt. The Internal Revenue Service is caught targeting conservative groups. The Department of Justice is caught snooping on Associated Press records. And the White House is caught fiddling public accounts of the murder of the ambassador to Libya. Looks like people skeptical of government were right after all. But for a change, there is some hope. The IRS story is a nightmare for Obama. Early this month, he told the Ohio State University graduating class... Unfortunately, you've grown up hearing voices that incessantly warn of government as nothing more than some separate sinister entity that's at the root of all our problems. Some of these same voices also do their best to gum up the works. They'll warn that tyranny is always lurking just around the corner. You should reject these voices. Yeah, uh, especially if you don't want the IRS to come after you. Know what I mean? You know, it's increasingly hard to believe that this man was once a professor of constitutional law. On Monday, he called the IRS, quote, an independent agency, end quote. But as the Wall Street Journal notes, it's part of the Treasury Department. It's headed by a commissioner of internal revenue appointed by the president and subject to removal, quote, at the will of the president, end quote, without any requirement for cause. And this is no academic quibble. The long struggle for effective self-government of exactly the sort fatuously praised by the president at OSU has been primarily about reigning in the executive branch, making sure it must, in principle, follow rules approved by the people's representatives in the legislature, and in practice, that it follows them properly. One genuinely wonders whether Obama knows these things. But it doesn't matter. See, the IRS story was immediately pursued by Democratic as well as Republican legislators. However they felt about it privately, they knew their constituents were horrified at Nixonian part partisanship by the tax man. So political self-preservation meant they better get after it. And as they do, the old Nixonian mantra of plausible de deniability is remarkably little use to Obama. As the Wall Street Journal also pointed out, quote, the White House says Mr. Obama only learned of the IRS political abuses from news reports. <laughs> Funny, that's also how they learned about the Department of Justice seeking the phone records of the Associated Press. And who knows what the State Department or the intelligence community was up to on Benghazi, end quote. Problem is, if the president is involved, the executive branch is out of control. And if he's not, the executive branch is out of control and he's out of his depth. Either way, see tyranny lurking above. Now, the AP story is still in its infancy. But again, legislators of both parties know if the executive is mistreating journalists, they need to act horrified. And when they do act, not just talk, Congress can get to the bottom of it. It can subpoena, it can interrogate, it can punish. And in fact, so can our legislators if they only knew it. Now, that leaves Benghazi. It's initially dismissed as partisan during a presidential campaign, including by supposedly hard-boiled journalists who, one fears, were more than a little sympathetic to the re-election of the awesome B. Obama. Obama still calls it partisanship, but even the New York Times now says the executive branch was deliberately lying from the outset in calling the consulate attack a demonstration about a silly video that got out of hand. Now, executive branch here me including state and the CIA, as a former professor of constitutional law ought to know. In any case, it's now clear that the White House itself was deeply involved in spinning the lie. But what has not been dealt with in any serious way yet is what the president knew and when he knew it. During the election campaign on October 26th, Obama told an interviewer, quote, the minute I found out what was happening, I gave three very clear directives. Number one, make sure that we are securing our personnel and doing whatever we need to, end quote. Yet we now know, and Congress now knows, there was no effort to deploy forces to stop the attack on the consulate, and indeed special forces who were ready to go were ordered to stand down. So the questions are, first, what order exactly did the president give, when and to whom? Second, what did they then do or not do to implement it? And third, what did the president do after giving that order?
And I don't just mean go to sleep without asking to be kept updated and the next day fly off to a fundraiser, though apparently he did. I mean later, when he discovered nothing was done in response to his order. It hasn't yet become a major issue because the question hasn't yet been forcefully asked. But it will be. Congress will ask it. That's how the separation of power works. And it's why Obama was exactly wrong to tell students at OSU that voices who distrust government, quote, suggest that our brave and creative and unique experiment in self-rule is somehow just a sham with which we can't be trusted, end quote. Actually, the American Founding Fathers believed that Americans could be trusted with self-government, but only if and only as long as they didn't trust the government, especially the executive branch. And horrifying as all this is for the administration, <laughs> whose legacy would be at risk if it had one, it's a vindication of the much maligned American system of government, particularly its successful preservation of the separation of powers. These scandals are a nightmare for the administration, but that's exactly why they're genuine cause for hope for everyone else. So it looks to me like Barack Obama's in a lot of trouble over these scandals. But am I overestimating their seriousness or underestimating his administration's capacity for damage control? I'm joined now from New York by Patrick Brennan. He's a writer with National Review. How serious is this confluence, do you think, of the IRS, Department of Justice going after AP records, and then the Benghazi re scandal resurfacing? Uh, I think he's got a real problem. And it doesn't appear that the administration has dealt with this terribly well. Um, and it goes, I mean, it goes deeper than that. I think he, the, the, the larger project of the Obama administration was basically like make Americans believe that government can do really good things for them. It's been the thrust of both of his inaugural speeches. And, you know, I think it's fairly clear that all of these scandals actually sort of call that into question that whether, whether we can trust government to do things well and should we ask them to do more things. And so it rep that presents like a serious basic problem for his agenda. It was a curious fact that Bill Clinton was able to survive his multiple scandals because there were so many of them, people couldn't keep track of them. And there are certainly a lot of details in all of these, but the overreaching impression one has is that government is out of control. And if the president's standing around saying, all I know is what I read in the newspapers, that actually may indicates the problem is worse rather than less serious, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, the way basically they've dealt with it so far is just saying, well, look, we don't know the facts yet, and we're going to wait for these various investigations to finish. That was sort of the way they went about Benghazi. They said, like, look, we're going to have an independent report done by this accountability review board. It turns out that, you know, which is sort of a legitimate defense as so far as it goes, but then it turned out that they didn't interview, you know, a lot of the key witnesses. They didn't, they didn't do a very good job, and they didn't get to the bottom of the issues there. And so that's what they're saying about the IRS now, that they did an audit, and now they're going to look at individuals who are responsible. And... So, you know, the president hasn't really gotten out in front of it. And um, so it's, it's definitely calling his, uh, you know, his agenda. It's going to present a lot of problems going down. And because especially the IRS thing is such a bad, bad scandal for him because nobody likes the IRS. So, so you could look at like Benghazi and, you know, ha you know, people really like the State Department. They like our intelligence community. They don't want to think that we're screwing that up. They don't want to think that our, you know, that, that, that our, our national security officials would lie to us about that kind of thing. Um, nobody likes the IRS, and, uh, and so nobody thinks that, that you know, everybody is, is concerned by that. And so you see a lot of Democratic politicians really, with really harsh words for it. So. Yeah, and I was just reading a story. I, I hate to start having to do this Clintonian parsing, but the White House has said that the president only just learned about the inspector general's report. But the question he was asked was, when did you find out about the targeting? And when people yeah. start answering the wrong question, yeah. you, you know that somebody, and maybe it will be a Democrat because their constituents are wrought up with this, is going to have to say that old thing, what did the president know and when did he know it? Yeah, I, I mean, I think we've got to get to the bottom of that. And it's, um, it appears that it went, went really far up and... Um, but but and certainly within the administration, and they've not done, um, you know, the, the, in the president's rhetoric all along, it's like they were, the, you know, he, he at the very least he's got to take a little blame for pretending, basically, you know, for suggesting this kind of thing would be okay. So like during the 2012 campaign, the Obama campaign was sending out um, emails to sign up for a petition to force the Koch brothers to re to uh, reveal their donors and you know, force Karl Rove's various uh, campaign organizations to reveal all their donors. 
um, you know, which for the most case, for the most part, they don't have to do by law. And that's actually what's at issue here with these 501c4 investigations. Um, but, you know, clearly the president's interests were being served here. And he actually doesn't believe that, for instance, 501c4s basically should exist. They sh you shouldn't have anonymous campaign sp spending. Now, the Supreme Court has said, yes, you can. That's a constitutional right. But um, the yeah, other problem is, is just that it clearly dovetails with exactly basically what he believes. Now, it's obviously hard to believe that, that it would have direction would have come from the top directly. But it's the kind of thing that they probably wouldn't have been. They don't they were not they're not fundamentally disturbed by, I don't think, because they think okay. these investigations should be going on. Well, thank you very much. More questions to be answered. But our satellite window isn't going to let us ask them now. Thanks very much for joining us from New York. Patrick Brennan with National Review. Thanks, Michael.